Hey everybody, welcome to Morning Glory Farmstead. My name is Lolly, and this channel is all about gardening, animals, and nature. Well, y'all know that I rely heavily on the help of others around here to get my work done, and I've always got someone who's willing to lend a helping paw. Now this is Buster, and I call him Bus, because he's well over 100 pounds, and he's trying to take a nap, but he keeps seeing me looking at him, so his tail is wagging while he's trying to fall asleep. All right, it is January 24th and we're smack dab in the middle of winter. And so I thought it would make sense to offer my top tips for growing food in a green stock garden during the fall and winter. But first, just a quick reminder that I am not an affiliate of green stock, but they have given me a link for y'all to get 10 bucks off your first order. So check that out in the description box. All right, today's gardening tips are just related to the cold factor. Even if you're not growing food right now, this is is totally relevant because you need this information ahead of time so that you can be thinking and planning for the next fall and winter seasons. It is never too early to gain knowledge that's useful and arms you for success. Now, let me give the disclaimer that I have given multiple times in other videos, and that is I am not an expert. And this video is strictly based on my experience, okay? I want to interject not to be afraid to experiment and try different things like growing food during the winter. That's how we learn. You may have great success and that is always satisfying, but don't be too hard on failures. Failures get a bad rap, but they're super critical in life because finding out what doesn't work is what leads us to figuring out what does work. They're just opportunities for learning. It's all about perspective and the key is to keep trying. All right, Let's put this information into context so that you can judge what you might be able to grow in the fall and winter yourself. I live in North Carolina in zone 7B, and so I have pushed my growing season beyond the 209 days by growing into the winter months. But realize this did take some effort. I've done what I can within my means to take really good and consistent care of the greens. And I'm just making that point because if I had left them to their own devices, they probably wouldn't have made it. And this has been a great partnership because while I'm making an effort to help them thrive, they are working so hard to survive. Now, as far as temps here, it's been below freezing numerous times. And so far the lowest has been a wind chill of negative 10. And that was brutal to some of the greens and they didn't make it. But I'll talk about that a little bit more in a few minutes because I think that might've been something I could have prevented. All right, let's get into it. Number one, plant your seeds when it's still warm enough for the seeds to germinate. Even if they're cold hardy and they're gonna do really well in the colder weather, the soil has to be warm enough for them to get going. And I actually planted my collards several weeks after the other greens when it was already getting really cold. But sometimes I just like to experiment to see what's gonna happen. And the result was that they grew much slower than the others in getting started, but they're actually looking really good right now. Now, number two is kind of tagging on to number one, and that is plant some things that are actually more cold hardy. Don't be afraid to plant a few different things so that you actually have some variety throughout the season. I'm only growing greens, but I have somewhere between eight to 10 varieties that I feel have done really well. So I've got some for cooking, and then I've also got some that are just for salads. And I'm gonna put the names of the ones that I feel did the best and the company that I purchased this from in the Facebook group, Morning Glory Farmstead, community garden. So y'all check that out. Number three, make sure you plan ahead and have something to cover your green stalks to protect them from the cold, the wind, the freezing rain and snow. Now I use the green stock frost covers, but I know that some of y'all use a variety of different covers. Just make sure that you've got something that's waterproof in case there's going to be rain, sleet and snow, stuff like that. Now I previously mentioned that some of my greens didn't make it. And the ones that didn't were on the bottom two tiers of my green stock. Now, not everything died on the bottom two tiers, but I think that the ones that did die didn't get enough protection because the wind was brutal and it was that negative 10 and the bottoms of the covers kept blowing up and around and shifting. And so it was kind of lifting up and those tiers got hit really hard. So the next time that happens, I'm probably going to put a rock or a brick or something around the bottom just to keep it secure and give it more protection. Now, the green stock frost covers allow about 
about 60 to 70 percent of sunlight through and so there was actually a period of three full days that i left them covered until the temps went up a little bit Number four, if possible, keep them near a wall or somewhere near a structure that can provide additional protection if necessary. If you push them up against a wall, this can really add another layer of protection, at least to some of the plants, by blocking that direct cold wind. And it can also keep them from toppling over if you guys get any kind of violent storms or crazy straight winds. Now, if I didn't have a wall that I could get them close to and they were calling for some really bad storms and possible tornadoes, I would probably lay the frost cover open on the ground, separate the tiers, and put them on top of the cover, and then zip them up. Number five, water your plants, even in extreme cold, but be strategic. When it was in the teens, I didn't water them daily, but I didn't go longer than three days without watering. And when I did water, I'd look at my weather app on my phone just to see when the warmest temp would be during that day and try to water it at that time. And remember, there's fewer hours of sunlight in the winter. You don't want to water them in the late afternoon right before the sun goes down and then the temp drops even more. If the temps are in the 40s and it's gonna rain, certainly let them get some of that. Rain is gonna really help them and it has nitrogen in it, which your leafy greens are gonna love. That leads me to number six. Remember that potting mix has nutrients that have been added to it, but that's only gonna last you so long. So like this week, I'm gonna be adding some worm castings to all the greens for an additional boost in between those lovely rainy days. All right, I hope you guys got some value out of this video and I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me again. I'll see you real soon in the next video. And until then, y'all have a great couple of days. Bye-bye.